I'm here in Estonia and I'm talking to Sim Sikut, he's the digital policy advisor for the government and the Prime Minister. Uh, Sim, we from Holland want to know, how did you pull it off? How did you get a system of identification, identification, which all the citizens and the governments and all the users are, are using? How did you pull it off? Well, first of all, we made it mandatory. So that's what governments can do in a way. No, but on a serious note is that we also provided many ways to use it to make it really stuff valuable for people to, you know, want to use it and become used to using it. And uh, third of it is uh, a lot of it comes down to, yeah, putting in place the right platforms. Yeah. But I mean, hey, the most popular thing, you have an identification card here in Estonia, right? We have the same card in Holland. The only thing is here, there's a chip. There's a chip in it. And there's a chip in it. And you can use that just like a bank card. This was used mostly to clean the windows of the cars in, when you're basically in 2002. And then you start, people started to use it. Yep. I mean, it was not technology, it was starting to use it. How did that happen? No, that's what I was saying. So, I mean, the more there were services where it was you know, usable, the more people actually had no reasons to take it out of the pocket and really stuff, you know, not just scrape the windows, but really, you know, insert it into the computer and thus have the efficiency of having a digital service. Yeah. Right? I can prove who I am, I can sign, yeah. And I can basically uh, use it in bank cards and uh, my healthcare system. Educate. What, what do you use? What do you use this card for? For digital services? Actually, well, anything and everything. So I mean, all the way from all my government services, all the way from uh, starting a company, if you like, to logging into my health portal, to voting online, and also in uh, yeah, very many cases of private sector use. My bank, any contracts that I sign, uh, any sort of uh, you know movie theater, book uh, bookstore, or you know even library. So it's basically five times a day. I would say a few times a day. Well, these days I use my mobile even more. So, so uh, oh, this whole card has disappeared into the mobile now, so you don't use exactly. the card anymore? Exactly, exactly. A few times a day. Does the private sector have to pay to, for the identification service to the government? Not for the government, but basically for a service provider. So we issue the uh, platform, the protocol. But basically, on top of that, if you want to uh, integrate it into your service, there's a fee you pay for the service provider. But and is that 10 cents per time or 15 cents or 1 cent? Less than that. Less than that. A couple of cents to identify, secure and to sign. Even less than that. Basically, it's a volume business. The more you use it, the cheaper it is. Your advice to the government, what's the big next step? Well, that's the big next step is really to automate the services away. We can make them invisibly happen in the background based on the ID, based on automation, based on a smaller bit of analytics. Yeah. And then to go to Finland and to basically get all of Europe oh, yeah. in the same platform? Absolutely, and well, this is what we would like to see the whole of Europe work by, because and that's, that's when we can make it easy for Europe to work together as a single market. Okay. So, this was from Estonia. We're going to use this digital system all over Europe. It's already law. In 2019, we have to do it, but now everybody has to use it. And we can use their technology to providing it for free. So, come on, governments, where are you waiting for? Thank you.